Hello students, this is Laura Antonez again in partnership with the Division of Multilingual Learners and today on Unit 7, Day 6, using cladograms and dichotomous keys to explore shared direct features in living species, I am going to guide you through mission number 5 from the NOVA Evolution Virtual Lab. Our focus question today is how can we use cladograms and the caramus keys to explore shared derived features in organisms and to identify and classify organisms? All right, stay with me. Let's begin. In today's lesson, you will complete the NOVA Evolution Lab that you started in the previous day's lesson. You will complete the final two missions of the lab, Tree of Life and Death, and you evolved too. You will also learn what dichotomous keys are and how they can be used to classify organisms. You will have the chance to practice using and making dichotomous keys. Finally, you will complete the first part of Unit 7 Student Research Organizer to reflect on what you have learned about evidence of evolution, cladograms, and dichotomous keys. Let's begin with the lab. Remember, the first thing we're going to do again is to open up the Nova Evolution Lab in our browsers, and we are going to log in. We already have an account, so that should be very easy. Open up your copy of the student worksheet for this lab that you started working on yesterday. We also did that the other day, but just as a quick reminder, once you open your worksheet, what you have to do is to open it up with Google Docs, once you have it open with Google Docs, you will have to make a copy to be able to save it on your drive. Back to the lab. So click the play button in the mission five, Tree of Life and Death, to open your fifth mission. Click on the embed video in the upper left corner to watch a video that shows how differences in DNA sequences can be used to diagnose and treat or manage certain diseases and disruptions of homeostasis. Follow the directions to complete the three trees in this mission. Hosting blood flux for dinner, fatal funds, and dawn of a modern pandemic. Okay, let's go ahead and click on mission five, tree of life and death. Play. Always remember to watch the videos that you have on your top left side of the screen because they always provide important information. Number one, hosting blood flux for dinner. Ooh, flux are parasites. Once in the game, my advice is just to place all the organisms inside the blood square. And then we'll dive into them by clicking right here in the magnifier. First, we will read some of the information that we have right here to know more about the organisms and we'll compare them. Then we'll click on the DNA sequence to see where those nucleotides are located. Let's go back to the lab and play this game. All the organisms seems to have T in position number four. So that should be their furthest of the ancestors. All the organisms, except for this one, seem to have T on position number two. So let's go ahead and, oh, I said this one. Let's go ahead and place T as the second furthest ancestor. G, H, and S, they seem to have C on position number seven. So let's go ahead and try that. Perfect. And finally, the ones that are splitting in two are H. Mirai and Mansoni, and let's just double check that we are in the right. Perfect. Let's answer the question. So, if blood flux were to exhibit extreme coagulite over millions of years, you would predict that blood flux would. Hold. Um, this word means that host and parasite evolve together, and therefore, I'm just going to click 
but that one is the right answer. Excellent. Part two of this mission is going to be a little bit more complex because we're mixing DNA with also different traits in the different snakes. As always, I start by randomly selecting their um, snakes and we are going to start organizing them as soon as we have some more information about them. Um, so we have the DNA sequence right here and now we need to find out, okay, which ones are the main characteristics. Also, in this uh, part of their mission, we need to find out what is the anti-venom that we need to generate for this unknown snake. This is the snake that bit Tyler when he accidentally stepped on it. It's three feet long and a greenish brown color with dark blotches on its back. Tyler is feeling weak and finding it hard to breathe. You must work out this snake's closest relative to identify the anti-venom that will save him. There is no time to waste. All right, let's not waste time and start. It seems that all the snakes in here have a gap between its fangs. So it seems that that's going to be one of the oldest traits for sure. Let's start um, placing some of these notes right here. We also can see that all of the snakes have a T in position number eight. All right, let's go and see what happens. Okay, we are right. Let's look at the black white snake because it only has one light. And I want to know if this snake has any other characteristics. It doesn't seem that it has. So that one probably is split up from the group long time ago. All right, we said that all of them have a gap between fangs. So let's see if this is a common thing that all the snakes have. And we are going to find out which ones have a C in position three now, which is the tiger snake and the unknown snake. So it seems that these two are going to be the two snakes that are more closely related. Let's find out how many snakes have single undertail scales. Let's click on the magnifier and the tiger snake does have it. The unknown snake as well. The type and snake does not have them, have them. The king does, and the fierce does not. So fierce and taipan, they split up together longer ago than the other ones. Okay, it seems that those three snakes share the single undertail scales. And finally, there are two snakes, the unknown and tiger, that still have a C in position number three. And we can guide us by those four um, circles that we have on top of them. Which anti-venom will save Tyler? Ooh, so the unknown snake is more closely related to tiger snake. And what anti-venom did we use for tiger snake? We used anti-venom D. Will that be the answer? Yes, excellent, very good. Let's go with the next mission, the next part of the mission. Okay, same thing. Just organize the organisms in the black square and we'll try to get them right by looking at the characteristics and the DNA nucleotides. And here's the end of the video for me. It was a pleasure to be with you today. I am sure you will have no problems in solving the last piece of the puzzle for mission number five. Good luck and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.